I've yeah. had those conversations about us. I mean, yeah. to be honest, I mean, we're not for everybody and, and that's okay. You know, I mean, I've had a lot of people say, well, no other inspector's noting this, but you doesn't make them wrong. Today's show, I'm bringing you one of the top home inspectors in Jacksonville. His company has 4.9 stars on Google with nearly 1,100 views, both residential and commercial inspections. He has over 20 years experience in custom home building, home repair, and renovations. We are going to dig in deep, find out what is it about home inspections, how important they are into the real estate process. And I know he is working with some of the top real estate agents, many of them I've had on the show here. We're going to talk about that and hopefully share some stories of the importance of home inspections in our process and, and how his company makes it more comfortable, if we can say that, for lack of better terms, for your home buyers. So let's welcome BJ Johnson of Inside and Out Home Inspections to the show. Thanks, Tracy. Appreciate Thank you. That. Thank you for coming on. I was, I was looking at your LinkedIn and it, so we, we've, you've got to explain. So you, and you told me a little bit, you got involved with your dad had a construction company yes. and, and, you, and you started doing some of the uh, slave labor, but then you, you took this hiatus for, well, I guess what, four or five years Easy. playing, playing professional golf. Tell us about that. I, I did. And are you, are you on David Heakin's golf team for this tournament of his? No, I have to ask that. Okay, no. you you are you invited to come in as the I ringer? Was not invited, no. Well, let's so. just say you must be invited to a lot of golf tournaments as the ringer. <laughs> I used to be, used to be uh, with the businesses and uh, and actually having a daughter now and horse. It's, mm. I golf is pushed to the side. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So we got different priorities, but I, I still enjoy playing. So, right. right, definitely. What legend is it? Is it something you grew up doing? And and how did you? I, I grew up kind of getting into it a little bit in high school, you know, stuff like that. Played with friends, just like anything. Wanted to play on the golf team. I, I mainly wrestled and did track and cross country in the off season to stay in shape for wrestling. Blew my knee out and I wanted to play golf for the, the uh, high school team. And I couldn't do that either because my wrestling coach wouldn't let me do that if I wasn't wrestling. So, and then I just kind of kept with it a little bit, playing with my friends and, you know, met my wife, Debbie. And she's like, I was like, you know, I always want to try to play golf, you know? She's like, well, let's do it. You know, she's one of those ladies that just, you know, she 100% jumped behind me and did it. And right. I was like, well, I think we got to move to Orlando. She's like, let's go. And that's what we did. Are you and serious? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I went to a golf school for about two months in Charleston. Mm -hmm. Chris, I got in, Chris was my instructor there and learned a lot about patience and just to get the game and stuff like that. And then I met my other coach through that organization, Kim. And then that's when I moved down to Orlando. Mm -hmm. So I tried for about five years and it was, it was some ups and downs, but, uh, you know, obviously I'm back here doing what I do now and, you know, unfortunately didn't make it. And I gave it about five years. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah which was awesome. I think cool. a lot of people realize, you know, there obviously there's a lot of, of great, you know, golfers and some of these guys, yeah. guys get picked up by division one schools and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they're, they're great players, but to to actually make it on the tour as everyone sees on Sunday afternoon. That's a totally different, yeah. you know, I forget how many tour cards they give out a year. Is it a hundred something? Yeah. I, just, I just tell people there's 30 people in the world making a lemon at it. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a tough business to break into. Mm -hmm. I, than I apologize when I, uh, for some reason, my technology, I had my all things VA loan up there, which I do on Mondays. So I do have your title on there correctly now. So the beginning of the video, when the Facebook live, I'm, it's, <laughs> But that might attract attention. People are like, hey, what's he talking about? And that might attract attention. Right. I apologize. Though. It's up there now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like I was telling you about my friend, Tom. I mean, yeah, he, you know, again, tried for years. He's he's in a Hall of Fame at Stetson for golf and so forth. And, you know, and never cracked the tour. But obviously he took the coaching side of it and yeah. made that a, a career there and has, has done very well. So explain what, you know. You're, you're growing up. I mean, what in, you know, I think I went West Henderson High School, which is, in, I assume, in North Carolina. Hendersonville, yep. North Carolina. And actually, I was just up there last week in Bat yeah. Cave. Bat <laughs> yeah. Cave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And the and the Inn Road, that's where my wife's uncle has a place up at the end of and the Inn yep. Road up the hill there. So, you know, growing up there, I mean, what was your, your vision? I mean, were you just kind of like when you were able to kind of work, just started doing stuff for dad and just, just went with that? Yeah. I mean, I... I loved working with my dad, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he, he taught me a lot of stuff and especially in the construction side, as we spoke earlier, mm -hmm. I mean, every summer, you know, my brothers would do their thing, but you know, I'd, I'd want to go to work with dad and it, and it was work, 
You know, I mean, like I said, we were talking before, you know, sometimes I'd be digging the footers and stuff like that and, you know, help pour concrete, showing mm-hmm. material back and forth. And then, you know, as I got older, I got start reading blueprints, you know, 10, 12 years old and just gave me a lot of knowledge and behind that, how the home was built, stuff like that. And it was just getting to spend time with my dad in the summer was pretty awesome. All hands-on training because I didn't, I didn't really see you, you never went to any sort of real, you know, a trade school or you didn't go be, try to become an architect or something like that. Yes, you all, your, all your stuff is really actually hands-on, really life real learning, world real world experience. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if, if you venture up in the mills, if you can, building houses here is easy. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we've had some basements starting up to the basement and you know, yeah, stuff. putting stuff on side of some of those hills yep. and, and that sort of thing. And we were, we were just up there and her uncle and a good piece of land at the end there. And they're building this, he's building this road up to the top of the hill for another piece of property he bought up there to possibly put another house up mm-hmm. there. And it's like, I'm, you know, these guys that are running these machines up the side of these hills, I'm like, yep. what? I don't know. <laughs> you know? Are you tying that thing off? Because I mean, I, I don't know how they do it. You're on a certain way. There, there yeah. are mountain people. So, yeah, there are, there are. <laughs> and, and when we got the flat land, the little three foot crawl spaces, they were awesome. Yeah, you know? so, <laughs> it's like yeah, woo, yeah. yeah a lot, a lot of, a lot of. I'm sure a lot of trial and error. A mm-hmm. lot, but just a lot of it, just experience and understanding. You know, the nature of the beast in, yeah. in that area, like you know, going up in the mountains. And those are small mountains. You imagine some of you know, some of the, yeah. the the larger stuff is right there. So. You you did the golf there in the mid two thousands ish. You come back. You're doing some. If I saw on your LinkedIn, some renovation type work. If that is that correct? Oof. To the golf, I kind of wanted to kind of figure out what I wanted to do again. I did a little bit of a handyman business stuff like that because I kind of went back to what I knew. Mm-hmm. Tried to get into the insurance world as an adjuster. Got my license for all that, but it just never really happened. So I kind of progressed back into that, and then ended up teaming up with a friend of mine and just got a GC license you know, a company is that way and started doing, because I went into the insurance side, started doing the insurance work for the floods or stuff like that for the people and, mm-hmm. you know, doing those p- type of repairs or renovations that way. And that was for about a couple of years. And then we decided to move to St. Augustine, you know. What do you think, I mean, you, well, now you, so you've been in St. Augustine now, for what, at least eight, eight years? 2013. So, okay. Yeah. 10 years now, going on 10 years. I mean, I always, we see a lot of new construction going on. But the the realization is obviously new construction, the price is just outrageous. I mean, what you can get square footage wise for an existing home. Right. And my belief, you know, Jacksonville has obviously a lot older sections. I mean, St. Augustine has its old section. It does. But for the most part, it's fairly, you know, if you percentage of homes have all been built in the last twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. Because I'm I'm in St. John's Golf. My house is just now twenty years old now. Yeah. And it's but as we push further west, especially when the expressway goes in, there's Clay, Green Cove Springs, and Clay, and, and as we go out, there is a lot, or you go down to Palatka, there's other areas where you have these, again, existing homes, mm-hmm. a lot of them post-World War II type style homes that, you know, renovation is, is really going to be a, a product, I think, is, it's keeping there, but I haven't seen it explode yet, I guess. Yeah. You know, in taking some of these homes. But then again, there's renovations going on all the time. Is these existing homes like ours is 20 years old. Yeah. Could we update the kitchen and things like that? It's, you know. I, I think that's going to be a continuous thing. You know, yeah. It, as far as us and our personal houses, stuff like that. But yeah, definitely out Clay County is, it's, it's definitely going. I mean, I was, we were there just this weekend at the equestrian center, like we were talking about mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, a girls horse show. And the plans they have for the equestrian center is, is crazy. You know, they're going to build a new barn out there for JSO for the mounted unit and stuff like that. Too. Oh, wow. And ball field facilities. Cause we'll have that in this area, mm-hmm. you know, so it's been a, if I'm not sure mistaken, there's no development going to be something like Nocatee out that way. Yeah. That's, so that's what I've heard. The same developer yeah. that built Nocatee has yeah. land or invested in land out, out there as yeah. well from that standpoint. You, you, it is interesting. You said the, the ball fields. Yeah, we are growing so fast and the county has to slow down from the standpoint of you got to realize we're, we are, you know, we have in St. John's County, we got out in Ponte Vedra mm-hmm. and Davis Park, from what I understand, is being overrun. You got the park right down here, down the street here on racetrack. But then as you go deeper in like World Golf Village and stuff where everything's heading, yeah, there's no the, complex, yeah. which amazes me from the standpoint, uh, and this is a little off subject, but it's still real estate. In, in general, from the standpoint of 
this is one of the, these are the amenities that these parents come for, right? Yep. And the, to have these facilities, these, these kids travel all over, all over really the Southeast playing soccer and all these other things, but we don't have a facility to bring them in, which contradicts St. Augustine because they're all about tourism. So yep. why would you not build this nice sports complex? But I always felt that Flagler High School needs to add football and we would build a sports <laughs> complex. Yep. That's all another yep. subject. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> Flagler, they do need a football team down there though and, and, and expand. So you're dabbling in the renovations. When does the home inspection business thought start going in your head? Well, that's a, probably, so, so we, we got up here around 2011. So mm. sorry about that. We, and then as soon as we moved up here, we, we moved into Volano. Oh, this is your water, by the way. No, thank you, sir. Beach house on the, the ocean there. My wife wanted to be on the beach. Like, hey, we've never been there. And come to find out, I don't know, six months after we move into there, wife starts feeling a little funny. It's like, I'm always tired goes to the doctor, guess what? I'm pregnant, you know? Oh, well, that's a good so, thing. I thought you were yeah. going to say something else. No, no, no. no. So <laughs> we didn't think we could have kids. So, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, we've been trying for a few years and then boom, six months after St. Augustine. Wow, must be in the yeah, water. I got right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there for about 2011, you know, Emma came about and stuff like that. And I was actually staying on that for about another year. So, and then um, I, I did some uh, property management on the beach, you know, right there. And then a good friend of ours that we met in Orlando, Robin Raywald, she, she's a realtor here now too. She moved up here before we did. And she's the one that told me, you, you should think about that, mm -hmm. you know? And so I kind of pondered on it and prayed about it and you know, looked at stuff and like, seems kind of like me, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. Right. I got stuff, took the test and okay, now where do I go? <laughs> yeah, you know? right, exactly. So, I mean, it's, you know, I, I've always been more of a self-employed person, you know, working with my dad. We always had our own businesses, you know, never really ventured out and worked for somebody. So, but it, but it was exciting and it just kind of took off from there. I just, you know, I mean, I, I didn't know everything. When but. you looked at the lay of the land at that time, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you're looking, well, who else is doing home inspections? What are they doing? What, what were you, what were you seeing then versus I think now you get your sales, you've got, you know, Kurt and Austin mm -hmm. and the Lunsfords and, you know, Really, I think raising the level or raising the bar, so to speak, and, yeah. and, and quality and so forth, and, and obviously interacting with her. But what was it like back when you were first kind of investigating? Well, it's definitely more single man shops. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the kind of the bread and butter of everything. And that, and you know, I started that way for about the first year, but I, I, I knew I wanted something different. I was talking to a few people. I mean, a guy out in Washington State was like my mentor. You know, he was like an electrical phenom, you know. And if I ever had anything electrical, that's who I would call and learn about it. But, you know, I, he told me about another guy down south, uh, John Schiller, you know, with the honor services. And he did team inspections. And I'm like, I like that, you know. So two guys on the site all the time, whether it's a 500 square foot condo or a 3,000 square foot house, you got two guys. They can pick each other's brain, seemed more efficient. Realtors loved it because we, you know, normally an hour and a half hour, we were done with our inspection and we're going to the next one. Yeah, I started that. Started incorporating that, hired my first guy, you know, and then it kind of progressed from there. But I, and then the WDO side, I'd always hire another company to do it, but I knew that's my next step. You know, I, I want to do that because I want that revenue. Yeah. I mean, you're already and, there. Anyway. Yeah. We're already there. Yeah. The, the guy now got hired from my pest control company. It's funny because that's who I hired in the beginning to do all of my WDOs. They trained me to do WDOs. I just paid attention, learned from them. And stuff like that, and then went and got my card and and things like that. So, well, I want to I want to talk about the dual deeds. So you you're in in you know I went on your website. Obviously, you've got you know, the wind mitigation, the the WDO. You're not going to especially you know we know it's a VA loan. We go we're going to need that. Yeah, get that done. I mean, and obviously with insurance right now, wind mitigation Crazy. is huge too. Yeah, from that standpoint. But yeah, the the two inspectors. So how does how does that you know, I haven't heard anybody, some other, some other people may be doing it, but I didn't see them really mention it. You know, so I don't know you're mentioning it. So the only thing I can assume is, you know, you're one of the only ones doing that concept. How I does, think there's other companies that do it. We're definitely the most consistent. Mm -hmm. We never break apart unless, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, someone's out something sick last or, minute, yeah. I'm sick, you yeah. know, I'm the fill in, you know, so, you know, so that kind of helps, but to, to me, you know, a lot of people thought I was kind of crazy for doing it. Like, how are you doing it? You know, you're not making any money. And, and sometimes, you know, you got to see the big picture, right? 
you know, with anything it's, mm -hmm. it comes and it will, the rest of it will take care of itself. And it, well, you roughly, are you actually doing an inspection roughly half the time as a guy by himself? Easy. Yeah. 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 And, and a lot of realtors explain, it's like, man, you guys are fast. We're, we're not fast. We're efficient because you think about it. If two guys are there an hour, that's two hours worth of work mm -hmm. where one inspector may be there two or three hours. It doesn't mean we're not as thorough. We just, one guy has his task. The other guy has his tasks and they meet in the middle and then we can produce reports in two hours after that. Right. So, and we, and we, you know, throughout the thing, I mean, one of the big things you mentioned even pre-show was finding the people who communicate. Well, mm -hmm. now you really only need 50% of your people to communicate because right. it's tough to find that person who is that I ideal person. You might find someone's a really good home inspector, but just like you said, they like to be left alone while well, them teamed up with another person who is a communicator and kind of buffer and, you know, yeah. kind of play off one another for sure. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. 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 That, that concept, I guess. Yeah. The immediate thing is, yeah. What, well, what's your cost? You got to pay these two guys. You can't charge that much more for that right. inspection versus some of you know you're doing in half the time, but what, what is the mark you're going to bear? Right. Yeah. From a, from the standpoint of, of cost. Well, since we're, we're talking a little bit about staffing and I think, and you would probably agree with any business, it, it's all about, it's, it's the people that 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 make the make the business what are when you're out there looking or if you're looking right now I me mean, or, or are you always looking because i think i think really good businesses are always looking they're not necessarily always hiring right they're just always looking to maybe have someone in the hopper in case someone yeah you know, there is a position open but what kind of characteristics are you looking for in, in when you like you interview these men or women and you, what are you what are you asking what are you trying to get at them to see if they're they're a fit for you it's, it's honestly, it's just more how, you know, you and I are talking right now, can mm -hmm. they carry a conversation, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, they're not, you know, obviously their attitude is positive, you know, they're not a, you know, doomsday or type of deal, but they just know how to communicate with people. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing that I'm looking for. And I, I'm not going to hire somebody just because I need another body because we're having these inspections and we're missing them. I don't, I, I don't think I ever want to be the biggest company. I just, I want to do us, you know, and our niche is what we have and everything else will take care of itself. And, you know, so when that right person comes along, yeah, I'll hire them, even if I need them or not. And I'll work them into the rotation and, and then I'll start looking for another partner for them, you know, type of deal. You've mentioned, you mentioned earlier too, I mean, you don't necessarily, they don't necessarily have to have experience or like, I mean, you know, a couple of decades of of construction, renovation, all, all the experiences that you would think, you know, someone was described Hey, you're going to start a home inspection business. What kind of people you want to hire? You know, I would, I would think of someone like you, oh, someone experienced, but from what I understand and what you're expressing, really your retail home inspector that's going out there on that, you know, those single family homes, you can train them to do it. It's, mm -hmm. it's really the person. So what, what are some backgrounds of some of your people that, that you found have actually molded in to make great home inspectors? Some of them come from the bar. <laughs> Service industry, service working in waiter. Yeah. yeah. Those are some of the best people. I mean, I got turned down, but I was actually eating lunch at the Waffle House with the, one of my other leads. And I, there was this girl there, she, the communication skill that she had. I was like, I want to hire you. You know, a little, little off, a little stood back and mm -hmm. like, no, seriously. Come to find out she had a little bit of construction background. She did renovations, but uh -huh. you could tell she knew how to talk to people, but she was comfortable where she was and which is fine. But I was, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Right. You know, it, it, it's that persona, that aura that people give out, things like that. So what what kind of, so let's say she said, okay, and you, interview, you, know, you did a formal interview and he said, yes, we want to bring her on. What kind of, what kind of, what, what is your you know, process to ramp somebody up to the point where they're able to then be assigned to a team and actually go out and. Well, they're, they're kind of a shadow for the first couple of weeks. They're just, you know, walking around each inspector, the, the inspector on the outside, the inspector on the inside, they're kind of shadowing them for a couple of weeks and stuff like that. It's, it's really a, a month long ordeal, just kind of looking and feeling and seeing what the other guys are doing and going from there. And then we kind of figure out which fits better for you, the outside or the inside. Are you comfortable on ladders? Are you comfortable on roofs? If you're not comfortable on those, Guess what? You got the AC most of the time. So, you know, and, and a lot of guys enjoy that in the summer, but, you know, and that's kind of how we determine where to stick them and where they're going to be and things like that. It's just, 
kind of how they're showing interest and peaking interest. And like my guys now, I mean, I never tell them, I don't want you to ever stop learning. You know, if, if there's a class you want to go to, if there's a certification you want to get, let's figure out how to get that and let, let's get that done. You know, it not only benefits me as the owner of the business, but it benefits the company, benefits the rest of the team members. They strive to be better. And that's, that's what we try to do. Try to be better every day. From the, the more uh, intricate the word, but you know, y y understanding, you know, you pull someone, you know, she had some construction background, but I'm mm -hmm. sure some, you know, others that you have had no, no construction. Right? They don't understand what ACDC is. And yeah, you know, you'll be able to go and look at the electrical box and actually write that report. How do you ramp somebody up like that? You know, even if it's a few, it takes a few months, it's still a quick time. Is there formal training out there in the home inspection world, whether it's online and so forth, just like maybe just like someone who might be studying for the mm -hmm. test or the general contractor's test, there's, you know, study guides and it's going to teach them. They got to learn on their own, but there's videos and all this yeah. material they can utilize. I mean, how, how do you, how do you get somebody up there? So they are, you know, now in a new industry, they have the personality, but now they need the, the lingo. The lingo. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, the schools that they take today, I mean, it's, it's basically to help you pass the test, mm -hmm. just like probably any school trades, you know, as far as that goes. The, the, there's a house of horrors like in Colorado and down South. A couple of my guys have been to that, but I'm, I'm not saying it's a, it's a bad thing because you could see every defect possible, you know, especially being green and, and new, and you'd probably forget half of whatever you left. It's us being human. Mm -hmm. you know? And I'd probably say, I don't know, 80 to 90% of the home inspectors out there now, they have no construction background, you know, and, and that's okay. You yeah. know, make them a bad inspector. Yeah. You know, but if they're just an observant, curious person, they can become a great inspector. And I, and I think in the process that we do, and I'm not saying it's perfect, but it works for us. It's repetition. You know, you're going through, you see a lot of the same things, but every house tells a little bit different story. And how are you going to tell it, you know, and how are you going to find it? And that's my, that's my main thing with the guys is this, you know, these guys do four inspections a day with the team. And so it's repetition, 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 still go, not with the blinders on, still have a broad look. Are you guys doing a, I mean, do, obviously you're taking pictures. Yeah. A lot I mean, of software has helped with that. Yeah. Obviously. But also from instructional standpoint, you know, taking videos, especially, you know, some of these things that are off like, Hey, I've never seen that before. Or, Hey, that really rare, really happens to, you know, document it, whether it's in a video or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you're sharing it with, the client. with, with, well, with the client, but with your team also, you mm -hmm. want the other, I mean, how many, how many teams do you have out there right now? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. So that they're sharing that information so that everyone's, you know, gaining the knowledge. I, we, I talk with the real estate agents all the time. We talk about like the importance of coming to the office, right? Uh -huh. Or when I first started in this business uh, almost 18 years ago, 17 and a half years ago, I was in a call center where I could reach across and touch the other mortgage bank. So right. we're hearing the conversations. Yeah. We're telling the stories. Okay. Like, hey, because we were doing a lot of refinances there. When you do refinances, it's a little different than purchases because mm -hmm. you're like, you know, you know, sometimes you're having to take the lead for the customer and say, hey, let's structure it this way. I need to do it this way to get you approved. We need to take cash out, pay this, pay that, pay out this. So how we structure those deals are a little different for every person, just like yep. every home pur purchase is and every house that you walk into. Do you, are you guys sharing or how, do, how does your team, do you have regular meetings where you guys are maybe sharing some of these stories so that everyone's getting that information, even though it was only one inspector out right. there? You know? Well, we have a group chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, technology iPhones are great. Yep. So we're in a group chat. If somebody sees something, they'll take a picture of it. You know, if, if the lead there on the job, I mean, we, we've seen a lot. I mean, th there's still sometimes we come up on stuff like I haven't seen that in a while you know, or something like that. And, and, you know, we share it in a group and say, Hey, this is what I'm seeing. And then, you know, this is what I'm thinking. And now with FaceTime and stuff like that, you can FaceTime the inspector, you know, they'll text me and say, Hey, BJ, you know, what's going on? I'm seeing this. I know something's wrong, but I, I just can't pinpoint it. And I'm like, well, let's just take a step back and look right. at it. Right. And, and that's kind of the process. I mean, you know, the other guys are there for their team members. We're hopefully a big family that we love working with another, mm -hmm. another, and we have our, we have our moments with one another. It's, 
and human, uh, uh, big brother and little brother. Uh, type if of you're, if you call yeah. yourself a family, there are going to be moments <laughs> all the time, all the time. So, but I mean, that's kind of how we how we do, it. and also too, some of our guys, you know, will make sure with the manufacturer stuff, you know, on the new construction, you know, we're not code inspectors on the new construction, but we better be familiar with them because how do you know if something's wrong if you don't understand it? And stuff like that. So we're always following manufacturers' guidelines and recommendations. And sometimes they're requirements, but sometimes they're best practices. Noticing the difference between them. You know, I've communicated so many times with the Hardy Rep local. You know, like, hey, man, what's going on here? This is what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. It's great to have their personal number. Or same with the, you know, the new zip systems coming out and all this stuff. You know, what are the requirements when you come out to the field? What are you looking for? Because I'm reading the manual and it says, do not do this but they're saying you're letting it slide. And so what- well, how they're installing it. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like, what is the real world scenario here? Because, and, you know, sometimes they're best practices, you know, and things like that. And, you know, getting clarification from the rep and not, not that the builder's a bad person, but yeah, they may misunderstand too. Like we could misunderstand on some things, you know? And I mean, there was- that we did they could be they could be missing on installing something and end up costing them millions of dollars later yeah because now they got whatever amount of homes they misinstalled this correct and when one person in the neighborhood Take finds out that they years. did something wrong yeah yeah they're all over it <laughs> it's everybody's we sharing i i want to say we're probably the first calling the tankless water heaters too close to the windows on the exterior of the house and everybody said you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong too and close to the window. So what's, what's the, why is there a rule for that? Why, what's the. Well, so I, I guess when the, it, it vents mm -hmm. and if somebody has their window open, the carbon dioxide come back into the house. Oh, so okay. Renai, okay. If they put it on the outside. Outside. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. So not is four feet from an open window or an open door, uh, 10 feet from a vent, you know, anything like that. So all they were doing is putting them three feet. Everybody's putting them within three feet. Everybody told me I was wrong. You know, I'm like, right, here's the manual. I got it directly from Renai. It's four feet. Here you go. And it took eight months, a year for them to start switching them. And then I was having the plumbers and the gas companies call me like, hey, we're over here. Is this another one you found type of deal? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, it is. Can, can you send me that report so I can see it so we can start talking about it? And the problem is they had two columns, one for Canadian and one for U.S., and U.S. was four, Canadian was three. Why is it different? I don't know, but that's what the book said. Oh, or three foot clearance to four foot clearance. Oh, on, in the manual. You're saying, okay, yeah. sorry, I thought you were... <laughs> so, yeah. And, uh, I, I've heard some uh, another horror story that sticks with me. It's been almost two years, well, a good year and a half since I heard it with you know, in some of these new, in, in going into new construction inspections. Mm -hmm. And if you're a real estate agent, you're listening right now, and I'm sure BJ will say something that I can cut a good reel for this new construction. You've got to have, you got to have an inspector on the new construction. That's these true. guys are slapping these homes together. Like I said, they were, they weren't even reading the manual. Someone probably told them just three feet away, or obviously the design guy, right? There's somebody, some architect or somebody's yeah. designing that. It's not like the guys on the ground are actually right. putting it in there. Well, somebody told the plumber that it was three feet and that's what they stuck to. Nobody ever confirmed it, but somebody told them that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. And all that, all that would have taken was somebody, whether they passed out and fell down in the bedroom because they're breathing that or somebody passed away, God forbid. And case, all of a sudden you got a class action suit and it's going to, it would cost the builder millions and millions of dollars to go out there and, and fix all that. And I, I just, I just don't understand, I just don't understand if, you know, the fact that they argued with you, they're arguing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, but what's the big deal of moving it from three to four feet? Well, now it's aesthetics, you know, because now, you know, sometimes they got another window there. Right. What are they going to do? Right. You know, they actually put it on the wrong I'm side fortunate enough. Or... Mine's in my garage. So. There, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I vented it out. I yeah, vented yeah. out through the roof with um, the side. The uh, Tico, because we, we have gas in St. John's Golf Country. For anyone out there, Tico, you you have a hot water heater go down, call Tico. They will actually put the, the tankless in. We upgraded ours because of the amount of bathrooms we have. Mm -hmm. And then I had them, instead of going outside the house, I had them redo the hole that's already existed in the roof. Yeah. And yeah, you know, just stay with that hole. Yeah. And so I cost me a few, but they financed that thing. I think it was cost us like 25 bucks a month on our added to our 
your gas bill. Mm -hmm. No interest. You can't yeah. go wrong with that. So those things, those things are out there when the hot water heaters go. But new new construction, you know, and we don't have, obviously we don't want to name any builders and so forth. But I imagine you've seen, and a lot of times, it you know, of course you're not inspecting every home because you're not being hired every home in the same subdivisions. Right. But some of these issues that you're finding in this house, they're doing that on the next whatever amount of houses because there's no inspector on it. On the it's making the same mistake, but no one's no one's actually reporting that. No mm -hmm. one's actually fixing this. Right. Yeah. I mean, it happens all the time. I mean, it, you know, I, I tell the customer, hey, these guys are human too. You know, some of them got 30, 40 houses to to manage. They they can't walk every one of them. They can't babysit every mm -hmm. sub on that job. It doesn't make it right, but that's that's the reality. It's of the nature it. of the beast. It, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, so you feel like you're hiring professionals. They should know what to do, you know, and sometimes, some, sometimes it catches them. I, I know. And, and I'm not saying this is the fact for the builders here, but I know when I was building, there was a company that approached us about starting to do some spec homes for them back home. And their mentality was, listen, it's less money for us to fix it later after you found a problem instead of fixing it now, because then we've got to stop everything. We've got to redo everything. Let's see if we can fix it later. And that, that's when I knew I never wanted to be a spec builder for some of these bigger, larger corporations, you know, and it's like, okay. You know, and, you know, even when we were building, we were doing one or two houses a year and it's mainly post and beam. We had, mm. we had like a little niche and like I said, we, we did everything, everything but the electrical and the plumbing and HVAC. Right. We installed the floors, we built the decks, we did all the trim work, we installed the siding, you know, didn't mess with foundation. You know, you know that's, another, man, that, that's, that's another contractor. Work. That's the <laughs> word. I got to play on the skid steer a little bit, do some <laughs> grading, but, uh, you know, so, I mean, and that's the thing nowadays, I mean, it's just understanding and having realistic expectations. You're, you're never going to get a perfect house, but it doesn't mean you can't try. Right. You know? Right. So. Well, you, you don't know what catastrophic or catastrophic could be. Yeah. House, you know, foundation buckling or whatever. That That's obviously huge mm -hmm. or just something that's going to cost you five or $10,000 to fix because of a leak. I, I, we had a situation and I know this house and, and the, the builder forgot to put the drain line for the AC unit in the slab. So they, what they did when they found out is they ran it up to the second floor, out through between the first and second floor, out the side of the house, and then down the side of the house. Now you got this ugly looking pipe coming down the side of your house. They had to put a pump in to pump the water. Condensate pump. Con condensation yep. pump. So, okay, well, I mean, how many, how many points of failure do you have here? possible points of fit right. that pump doesn't work and all of a sudden that moisture builds up right Ooh. you're away for the week or, or sort of sort of leaking out on your hardwood floor or something and acs produce a lot of water yeah and yeah. and we run them pretty much year round here i mean we Ooh. have mornings where it's freezing by the afternoon <laughs> where <laughs> we're turning the AC on, on, right yep. and and it, it just it's little things like that that add up and it i but you're right, 100% to the point of the need for the home inspection. These large builders are like, yeah, our architect would actually have to take a day to reconfigure whatever, really probably right. at less than 15 minutes. But they're going to take oh, that, that whole day is worth building a bunch of houses improperly and hope nothing happens. Happens. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what's really sad about it. It is. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Right. So. So what is the, 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 the process is someone, someone's looking at, cause I know some of these builders have different rules. They want to know, a lot of them want to know right away. Are you going to be working with this new uh, construction? Since you're probably working with many builders in town, I'm only really experienced with one. What are some of the, you know, if I'm, if I'm out looking at a new home today and I've got a real estate agent with me, when do I, when do I need to tell them, Hey, I'm going to be bringing in a home inspector. I mean, probably to set up expectations, just like anything, it's probably from day one. Mm -hmm. if, if you know you're going to go forward with that builder to say, you know, I, I want to make sure that because there's three inspections you can get wise to builders. It's the pre-slap, the pre-drywall, and then the final, you know. So it, the sooner you tell them, the better. Some of their communication skills are not very well because, I mean, we've been called like, oh, hey, they're getting ready to install insulation tomorrow. Can y'all come? Like, you know, I mean, we, we, we can't get there. You know, we're all booked out today. We'd have to come now. Right. You know, right. and, and it's, unfortunately, it's an approval process too with the builder. It's, you know, we, 
whoever the builder is, we can inspect 10 homes that week. We got to submit 10 different requests for insurances to give to them for those 10 houses. And it doesn't matter. It's like, you, you know, we're insured. Right. You know? Right. And I, I will say DR Horton makes it the easiest because they keep our stuff on file for one year. Everybody else got to resend it every time. You know, I wish everybody follows suit on and that you side. And I, you and I you know, know. So, it's delete, delete, delete. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, I, I, I just don't get why you, why you would build a company. And I know some of these companies are, are you know, some of these bigger companies are, some of them are local and then some of them are, are national. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of detached from the, the, the original owner, that sort of thing. But why would you want to put the quality that you put out there without, to me, to me, I would, I would want an inspector spot checking my homes because I know that guy that, what do you call it? The site supervisor, mm -hmm. he cannot handle all of them. He needs someone to come in. And, and again, what's, what's one of the jobs of the site supervisor? He's got to create relationships with all those contractors to make sure they show up on time yeah. and do the yeah. jobs. Right. Yeah. So he's got to be their friend too. Yes. Yes. Versus saying, oh, my inspector came in and, you know, found these things. Yeah. It's his fault. Blame it on him, but we yeah. got to get it fixed. Oh, and, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, most of them are, there's more getting better. Some of them are just like, you know, oh, it's a home inspector. He doesn't know anything. Mm. If, if it's not a code violation, we're not, we're not fixing it type of deal. And yeah, I, I get it to a point. I mean, there's some things, you know, we'll note some of the cosmetic things that we see in an, especially new construction, you know, if it's just something hard to see, we'll, we'll note it. I mean, that is what the blue tape is walked for, Yeah, for the client. That we'll part's just, the easy part. That, that, that part's the easy part, but we yeah. tell them just, just be generous with the blue tape. Use the whole roll because that's your one and only shot to get it. Yeah. You don't get it. You're done. Well, you, yeah. I mean, they, they, they'll have their warranty and come back at the end of the year, but I think the, I think, I mean, would you agree? And you tell me you're doing the inspections that really that slab inspection is important it's, as well, because one of your competitors in the area is really good. He was telling me a story about them where they were positioning the uh, drains and so forth in the bathroom mm -hmm. weren't spaced correctly for the toilet and shower and all that stuff to be, you know, a certain distance away from each other. So and and they'd like had that. to go in when they go to do the bathrooms, they'd, they're sitting there chipping away at the, to redo the plumbing. I mean, how much did that cost? You know, they talk about, oh, we'll, we'll wait and see if someone finds out. Well, yeah, you're going to find out when you try to put the toilet in. This. Yeah. You can't put the toilet in the shower. Or I, I could do an offset toilet and get it right. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. It, I think they're important. Some people don't understand them, you know, and, you know, that's kind of the point. I mean, probably the, some of the biggest things we find is footers off the size, according to the plans. Mm. I know some other inspectors don't know how they do it, but they have access to the plans. We rarely do. Mm. So, and all of a sudden the customer have them and I'm like, email those to me so we can actually see it because otherwise it's just going off memory. Like, okay, we know this should be this now. So we got to call it that way. And we request plans like, no, we don't hand those out. Are you, well, are you, so when you do, when you don't have plans, you're, you're looking for, for obvious code, you know, uh, yeah. the footer's not the proper size for that proper. Yeah. Go, going off experience, like, hey, this is supposed to be a 24 inch footer by 12 inches tall. Mm -hmm. You know, is it 24? If it's 20, we're going to note it. And if the builder comes back, say it's supposed to be 20, it's spec 20. Well, we didn't know that. You didn't give us the plans, mm -hmm. but we called it out type of okay. deal. A, a footer not properly sized could cause settling and elevate, mm -hmm. you know, that could go to the structure damage. You know, even the erosion around some of the stuff, whenever they do, you know, I mean, I've, and we've been on a few pre drywalls when we've gotten some heavy rains and, you get know, the left corner of the house. I mean, you can see up under the slot. They're like, oh, we'll just push your back. You know, it's like, yeah, but it's not tamped. This compaction test is gone. It's, it's, there's a lot of things wrong with it, you know, and it's not that we try to make it a big deal, but the builder's like, it's not a big deal. We can fix that. Don't worry about it. You know, which I understand to a point, but got a problem. Let's just, there's a, there's a solution. Let's just get it done. Make yeah. sure you do it. Yeah. You know? it, so. it just blows my mind. So we talked earlier, cause I, I told you, I, I went on a rant a couple a month or so ago about people asking about rates and about prices. But when you were looking at this new home, right? Oh, it's going to have a warranty. It's, you know, all this other stuff. What are, what are we really looking at a cost? I mean, or you, you may have even a, just a preset cost for new construction. Cause you know what you're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. You're going to go out there three times. 
what kind of, I mean, I have no idea because I've never built a home. What, what kind of additional cost is that to the buyer? I mean, our inspection started at 379. So, I mean, if you got three, it, it follows within those parameters, 379 times three. Okay. So thousand yeah. dollars, they could spend a thousand dollars and just, you know, like peace say, of mind. you can, yeah. Peace of mind. And, and, and the way the market is, yeah, you can walk away at the 11th hour, but you know, those contracts are not written in the, on the buyer's behalf. Yeah. You know, they're, they're builder slanted and they understand that. And yeah, you, you can either spend a thousand dollars and have, you know, that inspection, like that story I was talking about the drain pipe from the AC, mm-hmm. if they did a pre-slab inspection, they would have said, where's the AC pipe? Right. And that would have been solved. No, but when this homeowner doesn't find out until they're doing their final walkthrough that now they have this pipe running and it has a pump to it and all this mm-hmm. other stuff. And they're like, okay, well, if, Hey, if you want to cancel, it's great. And at that time, the prices were going up. So the builder's like, yeah, go ahead and walk. We're going to keep your earnest money. And yeah. we're probably going to sell this home for more than what we sold it to you for originally drain pipe you mentioned drain pipe i mean on pre drywall there's nail guards for the water lines and the electrical lines there's a house that we noted several nail guards on you know and they said they fixed them or lack of nail guards lack of nail guards uh-huh. yeah they're missing so for the electrical lines oh we come back and do the final the whole house is swiss cheese because they got to rewire because they got shortened lines somewhere so it's uh, like you know uh, and you're going to be done in five days i don't think so yeah you know so now the finish of the drywall, it's all patched and, you know, it's like, well, we'll just touch up and like, you know, it, honestly, I, and if I tell people, it's like, listen, this is, this is my brand new car. Don't put the scratches on it. Let me do it. I don't want patchwork in my ceiling on my walls. I'm sorry, but mm-hmm. you need to either skim the whole wall and recode it or whatever. And, right. you know, make it, make it look like it's brand new. Yeah. You know, and it's just little things like that. $2 and 50 cent part. But egos and electricians, oh, he's a home inspector. Or no, hey, we had our inspector, our third-party person come in and inspect. They're not doing what we're doing. They're, those third parties are, they're not working for the builder, but they're hired as a third party for the county from the builder to do the, the code inspections. And that's all they're looking for. Yeah, but so. how, how are the builders doing quality control? To me, that's a quality control thing. Super. If I'm high, if I, if I hire out to a third party, I want you to come in and pull coals and find out because in my, you know, like you said, you know, you hire the right people, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's not about being huge and crazy because trying to get a warranty done by some of these builders is also like pulling okay. teeth. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I used to lend for them. They, the people would call me and I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I am in the same building, but I didn't yeah. you know who the warranty person is, right? That person. And it is like pulling teeth. It's like working for the government. Mm -hmm. I mean, to get, to to finally get the right person who needs to place the order and get things done. But to to go through, when you have these site supervisors, you have these contractors and you, you hire someone like yourself or any one of the top inspectors to come in and point and say, Hey guys, uh, you're doing this wrong on this house. So we don't want you to do it wrong on the next 10. So let's make the adjustment. And like, you know, mm-hmm. like putting the nail guards on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, how much did that cost them? And one, delaying the closing, as you and I know, as soon as that house has an occupancy permit, they want that house closed. They don't right. want it. They don't want it off their books. Right. And in this case, how how long did it take them to figure out where the short is? What's causing this problem? Yeah. yeah. They, they didn't because they basically had to rewire the whole downstairs. Yeah. You know, they could, they could there were either so many. Or they couldn't pinpoint it to one spot. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, with today's technology, everything's advancing for safety. That's normally what the electric code is. It, it's a new safety feature. So things become more sensitive, you know, under some of the devices, you know, these CI, GFCI type of breakers are just, you know, they're detecting whatever they're detecting in that light. Something's wrong there. I'm, I'm going to trip my breaker. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're great pieces of devices for safety, but that's, that's the electric code. It, it, goes up every year because, hey, we can add this for improved safety. And and we're about a three-year delay on each code, you know, here. And you have very little wiggle room. And, and being in Florida, process. they're constantly digging. And, you know, obviously, they're going to build the window a little better. They're going to, you know, these hurricane. Every time a hurricane goes through, there's probably another code that comes out. A little bit. And we got downgraded, <laughs> so which is good. We're not, you know, Miami-Dade or anything like that. And right. This was some people moving from down there coming up here. Oh, my gosh. I Y'all are building wood frame houses. How are you doing that? And it's like, 
how the wind y'all have down there. Yeah, you yeah. Know, we, class four, class five coming. Listen, man. Yeah, yeah. It's not good news anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, folks, this episode was produced by Streamline Media, the number one media company for helping brands generate content that converts. I knew I wanted to start a podcast to reach more people and bring value to the world, but I did not have the time or the knowledge. Streamline Media became my secret weapon to building my show. They handle all my back-end work, production, and strategies to keep my show going strong. If you're in the real estate business and looking to make content that generates more leads and brings in more revenue, check out the Streamline Media link in the show notes and discover how partnering up can supercharge your path to real estate excellence. Tell us a little bit of how your team is structured. You have three teams of inspectors where you have two inspectors on a team. Mm -hmm. And then what do you, from a, from a staff. So if, if a client's calling in, I did go on your site, it looked like you can actually book an appointment you, online. You, you can book so online. Tell us, tell us how that is. Who do you got to answer in the phone? Who's your customer service? What's going on there? So you could always go online. You know, we got everything is software nowadays, which is pretty good. And you know, the agents can have their own little shortcut on their home phone you know, and contact to their inspections directly on their phone instead of looking through the emails. Okay. So they have um, a little app basically. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then they can schedule online if they're after hours and they saw, hey, at least grab a spot. Right. Then my office will call and get all the information and stuff like that. And got three girls in the office and answer the phone. You know, we're, we're not 24 seven hours, but we're, we're late enough to be effective. And, and if I see something come in, I'll, you know, I got it on my phone too. If I see something calling, somebody calling, Multiple times in a row, I'll I'll answer right. you know after I see what's going on. Well, I think the app is great. You know, like I said, I know my wife's a real estate agent. She's a lot of times working. And it's like okay, all of a sudden you look down and it's eight, nine o'clock, and you're like, hey, I need oh, man, I need to call them to to get on the books. They can at least go into your app yeah. and schedule that appointment, whether it's the next day or the next day. Mm -hmm. And now now that spot's blocked. So whoever's coming in the morning says, oh, we have a new appointment at three o'clock or call and tomorrow at two yeah. and call and get the details. And that's, mm -hmm. sort of, yeah, that's brilliant. So you have three calls. Is, is it from a scheduling standpoint, you have the app and I'm, I'm sure you, you know, one of your three people in the office or but what are primarily those, those support doing in the office for you? So they're, they're helping us a little bit on the back end. Above and beyond scheduling. Beyond scheduling. Yeah. Yes. Answering any e emails that come through for the inspectors as they can, mm. stuff like that, or sending out a text, say, you know, hey, so-and-so, the VA wanted to call you, talked about this report or had a question about it. So they send us text messages and kind of remind us to do that. Permit the, information. Agents, like you said, emails, responding to the e emails. So are people emailing them, asking questions about their report? That's yeah, they, just their they, preferred they way to a, communicate is email? Yeah. yeah. So, sometimes it's kind of like when the guys are on a job, I'd like them to focus on a job and not be on the phone mm -hmm. too much because, you know, hey, give the dedicated time to that client in between. Don't want know. to confuse homes, which I'm right. sure can happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. because I mean, I, I, man, I know when I first started, yeah, the year after I could name every house that I inspected. I remember that house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And had this. Mm -hmm. After the week, it's like, okay, I, I can't remember it. Let me go look at it first before I start talking to you, unless you can refresh my memory. Right. You know, right. So they help with that. The permit information, especially with the wind mitts and the four points, we provide all the permit history on the houses that we inspect. So they'll go ahead and download that PDF and stick it in the reports for us and things like that and help us, you know, help the inspectors mm -hmm. and a little tidbits like that. Well, so, so you're, you mentioned earlier something about being able to, you're within a, within a couple of hours, you have the report done. Yeah. Is it because the, the guys are, are now, are they walking around with a, a tablet they're updating or they just do it right there on their phone because they're taking pictures and uploading. Oh. So that's giving them a good structure yeah. of the day. And then are you, are you, you schedule time in between the appointments where they have a half hour, 45 minutes to go in and kind of fill in the, give yes. us some color commentary. So, so we have like eight, 11, two, and then ones we don't advertise is four thirty. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's for like, if somebody needs something last minute, hot rush. Yeah. They forgot. Hey, I got, I got like a two day window. Can you get it? Right. Happy deal. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's why the guys are like this at the inspection, they're taking their fi pictures, documenting. I've worked pretty hard on our, I, I wish I could say my report's so unique. It's not, mm. you know, how our reports tell the story is different from Kurt, different from Austin, different from Lunch Pro, different from Wally. It's, mm -hmm. We all tell the same story, but it's structured different. You know, it's 
you know, I'll look at their reports and say, I, I don't like that. They'll look at my reports. I don't like that. Ooh, but I like that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So over the years, I've developed some pretty good comments that, you know, it's find the comment. I know I got one. If it's not, if it's one of those rare ones, Hey, we'll make a new comment and just flag it. And, and then that way you can at least document it and stuff like that. But by the time they're done with the inspection within the hour, that report's already done. It's already merged. And then, so with the three hour time slots, if they're done between one hour and two hours, the guy driving and then the passenger is going through the reports, make sure everything's answered, proof of the reports, they got questions or calling out, things like that. So they could, we'd done it before to where we published a report before we got to the next one. Yeah. All right. Report's done. You're sending it over to the, to the agent. You know, we talked about communication and I know, you know, in your business, you know, the, and, and even in my side, the, the biggest thing that realtors want are not for you to buy their leads for them. It's actually to communicate with them, especially mm -hmm. why the loan's in process, yep. you know, giving them updates, just letting them know, Hey, everything good. Or if it's off the tracks today, it's off the tracks and we need to get it back on right. so that they're not, they're not, you know, blindsided in your position. That is as the home inspector, that's one of the key characteristics is this communication. So when you, you send that report off, you immediately calling the agent even before they even open it up to we're calling somebody before they open it up. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, well, like I said, we don't want them to be blindsided, especially if there's a, Hey, we, we had some pretty big stucco issues or, or something mm -hmm. like that. We had some water damage or moisture that we found with the thermal camera. It's going to need stuff. So you're going to see that the guys, you know, we try to call the agent first, you know, even though the buyer's our client and then we'll convey to the client and stuff like that. And even afterwards, we're still available. We tell the client, you know, like, Hey, if you got any questions, get the report. We take a lot of photos just to so you kind of see no, what's there. a thousand words. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. You know, and it's reports can get lengthy, you know, nowadays, you know, software's made it so easy to do that. You know, and we tell people like, listen, there's some stuff in there, maintenance items and stuff like that. Cosmetics. We just want you to know that, Hey, we saw them. It's that hairline crack. And the how do you separate? How do you separate that? Because, you, like you said, the report's lengthy, <laughs> so they're sitting there flipping it through, and however the report is, you know, laid out, you know, whether it starts with certain rooms or whatever, and it's working its way through the house, and you're got the pictures in the garage and everything else going on. How do you separate so that someone who's obviously a typical buyer is only doing this several times in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at this this home inspection or first time home buyers looking at the, the home inspection, going, "Oh my god." This thing's 25, 30 pages long, right? Yeah. How do you separate to keep it simple, stupid for mm -hmm. them that, hey, here are some minor, you know, wall plate, blah, 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 right. this, that, and the other thing. You know, probably looking at cost, you know, $50 when you move in to solve these problems. But this over here could be a $5,000 issue. Yeah. So we're, you know, everything's color coded. Mm. So ours is blue for like maintenance, like honeydew list. Hey, it's in the summer, but this is more of a honeydew list. Here's something for you when you move in, uh -huh. you know, orange for us is like, Hey, here, we found a defect. It needs to be addressed. And then red for us is safety, anything electrical fall hazards, you know, red is pretty dramatic, uh -huh. you know, but if it's safety issues, that's kind of how we categorize them. And that's common. Most people, they see red bold plant, they're, yeah. they're going to stop. Yeah. They freak out. I mean, yeah. And some, you know, you know, what's the temperature of your client? Uh -huh. You know, some people are like, yeah, you got some pretty large cracks in the wall. It's, it's definitely settling. There's movement. You got three inch drop over, big deal. Other people like, hey, I got a hairline crack here. Oh my God, the house is falling down. No, that's just cosmetic. It's just expansion of contraction mm. of materials. Right. No, it's falling down. I, I'm, I'm walking. Yeah. You can't control that. No. <laughs> you know, that's the person. You know, yeah. it, all those much as you try, I mean, you just have just different types of personalities, you know, and right. it's what makes us human. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. But, but we so how do, how do you talk very simple? Well, I mean, talk yeah. about the, you know, like I said, there, there's, there could be a small foundational issue and small meaning, meaning it can be fixed mm -hmm. within a reasonable period of time and, you know, for whatever amount of money, how do you, how do you brace, you know, the, the, the real estate agent, I imagine is the real estate agent generally the first person you call to we, get them on in line with you before yeah. you make that approach to the homeowner? Mostly because, you know, sometimes people just don't have a, don't have agents, but mm. you know, they, they know their client better than we do because sometimes we, we haven't even met them. Yeah. You know, yeah, them on the phone. exactly. But you know, I mean, like I said, it's just, you know, it's like, Hey Tracy, you know, we inspected the house. I know you were concerned with those cracks in the garage, but they're hairline. 
is common. You know, anything normally over less than a quarter inch, they're fine. It's just natural expansion. Concrete's in a crack, you know, and then if it had a large crack, hey, we saw a large crack there. It's, you know, 19 house. It's been there for a while. It's got a little off shift. You may want to consider getting a foundation guy over there just to, you know, brace it up. You know, generally that's starting around 3,500 bucks because that's where it is, you know, and it's a separate pool. So wait, you're going to hand that off now. Do you guys generally like say here are three different foundation companies in the local area that I would recommend, you know, you probably get a second, you know, a more precise professional look at that and what that may cost. It depends on the realtor mm -hmm. because some of the realtors have their own people. So mm -hmm. we don't ever want to step on their toes. Right. You know, I mean, I, I know good people. You guys know good people. So if, mm -hmm. if I had that relationship with that realtor and I can, you know, they trust me or my guys, we'll mention a company. Otherwise we let the realtor handle that because, and we just say, you need this type of person, you know, come out and look at it. Whoever it is, is fine. You know, it, then if they ask us like, Hey, you know, how you know, the foundation guy, you know, yeah. I know David really yeah. well, you know, it's like, you know, we chatted multiple times. It's like, Hey man, I'm under one of your houses. How do you know? Hey, here's a picture. <laughs> yeah, this is your stuff. You know, yeah. how long ago did you do that? You know, so that that's the importance of having relationships with these reps and these companies like, Hey, I know this is you guys. Can you tell me a little backstory? Yeah. You know, type yeah. of deal. So. And it makes you in, and it shows you're going above and beyond mm -hmm. and you're putting a little color commentary as I say to the, to the report that, Hey, this, this was done about three and a half years ago. And this yep. is the reason why. And yeah. Alpha foundations um, has a lifetime warranty. I mean, yeah. How can you beat that? Yeah. Come understand it behind their work. hundred percent. hundred percent. What do you think are, you know, we talked about briefly earlier about you know, people who you hire, but let, let's actually narrow it down. I mean, this might be a good reel out of here. What are what are three important things for when a home inspector through the entire process, the time they show up at the home, or even actually, I guess when they actually get the assignment, right? Mm -hmm. So because you said you let you'll, you'll call the the buyer and you know I'll probably go through what you're going to do and and so forth. From that, from that standpoint, from when that home inspector or that team is given that assignment to the point of that home really closing, because they could have questions anywhere from the time the report's done, you know, till finally they say, yeah, we're going to buy the house. And then they sign mm -hmm. off on it. And then generally, you know, the conversation kind of stops at that point for the most part. What are three important things a home inspector needs to do in that time period? Definitely communication is key. Mm -hmm. That is the most important thing. If somebody doesn't understand something, they, they, they need to make sure that the person understands it. Mm -hmm. They, the customer needs to realize too, that if they don't fully understand something that they need to ask us because if, if we don't know, they don't fully understand. Yeah. Because a lot of times they're not in person or over the phone. Sometimes you get that deer in headlight look mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you're, you're kind of glazing over here. Let's stop and back up. What don't you Cause, understand? Cause we don't want them calling the father-in-law. Correct. <laughs> or the uncle or the uncle. Oh, the uncle. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and man, we've had a few people crawl up under the houses with us. It's yeah. pretty funny, but I mean, you know, you know, and the communication even afterwards, man, that, that's really the key. Just being present, you know, for the realtor, for the buyer, you know, and just, just being there. I mean, I have people call me six months later. Hey man, y'all did an inspection here and you, you had this problem and now I'm seeing this. Can you come, come over and look at it? Just, just let me know if I can. Come while I'm in the area, I'll be more than happy to stop by. You know, it's just building that customer relationship afterwards too, you know, and, and being there through the process. We, like our report says, it's like, you know, we want to be your building consultant for life. You know, mm -hmm. if you have questions, even if it's a year, call us, you know, we're here to help, you know, so, you know, with that and following through with the emails, answering your emails, answering your texts, you know, sometimes we can't answer them as soon as we get them, but you know, give us till the end of the day you know, to get to you, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. And just, you know, and then patience with the customer, you know, some customers are, Hey, you know, it's, I'm, I'm good. We're good to go. And then a little more require handholding. Yeah. You know, they want you to show you everything. It's like, well, some stuff I can, some things I can't because you're just certain areas, I, you know, and just having that patience level. I, I had, an, I had another question digging, digging in the questions and I, I lost it there because I didn't want to interrupt you, but I mean, it will come back to me as any small business owner, whether it's a real estate agent, a home inspection company, a loan officer, every small business that we can see has failed at certain 
things and failure, meaning, you know, maybe they had a marketing plan. They, they're like, yeah, I want to do this. And then it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Or it could be hiring, you know, how you hired people at the beginning to now. What are some of the things as a small business owner, you know, relative to some of the things that you, you kind of paid that, paid the, paid the, I wouldn't say the ultimate price. Cause that's not the, that's not what I would say. But your your price your price to admission or your price to the education was a little bit of failure. Yeah. Some some things that you've kind of gone through and growing pains and from starting this company from scratch. I would probably the old saying, keeping up with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. it, it's the same with the business. You see somebody else doing something, it's like, you know, why didn't I think of that? Getting caught up in that instead of doing what you do best. You know, as a company, we do a lot of things. We offer a lot of services, you know, sewer scoping, mold, you know. Um, just the other day, you know, another home inspector found moisture under a window and they called us to to do invested testing, you know. And and that's another thing that we do, you know. We're certified stucco people, you know, so we have a little more knowledge on what stucco is and how it's supposed to be. Got to find out it wasn't moisture after we investigated it, we pulled things out is termites. Oh my goodness. So the mud tubes behind there were indicating moisture. So, you know, found the problem. The home inspector indicated, hey, there's moisture here. Thank goodness the be and everybody followed up on it. Found termite damage. Yeah, things like that. I I'd say that's probably my biggest failure is 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 kind of getting to where it's like, hey, those guys are doing that, you know, and let me just see, you know, and 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 getting off track and sticking to the game plan. I mean, we're always curious. We always want to kind of put feelers out and do things better. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of great inspectors out there and and companies. You know, they all have their niche. You know, but no matter what, if you have the better customer service, that's where it comes down to. Because you find some of these, like you know, we I talk about the agents. On there's a lot of shiny bells yes, and whistles flashes. that flashes that yeah. are coming from. But the reality is, ninety five percent of your stuff is there. You that little thing is only. You know, for that one-off customer, you know, uh, you know, as a loan officer, I'm often asked, you know, some agents because I think they just don't know what to ask. Hey, send us a you know thing about the, your different products. You don't have enough time in the day to go through all the products. And trust me, I have every. If you, I don't have what you need, you know, go play the lottery that night. Now <laughs> I know I don't have every single thing. Yeah. I know of the big, the big obvious ones that I don't have, mm -hmm. and this is what they are. Yeah, but. The reality is, you know, if you're in the business, you're you're providing the service for a majority of what they're going to need for them, the mm -hmm. bread and butter. There's some little one-offs, you know, here and there. That happens. Yeah, yeah. Where you run upon a unique property that needs some sort of thing, which I did notice you like. You guys are you guys do scoping mm -hmm. of the pipes. I saw that on your on your website. Yeah. You know, it's, it's probably some of those things that you were you were chasing. You went and got certified. Mm -hmm. I did see a lot of certifications also yeah, on your yeah, website yeah. that are there. And I mean, some of those certifications you probably got and probably maybe never even used them. No, the energy yeah. efficiency stuff like that. I mean, I, yeah, you know, I mean, it's you have knowledge. You got that in your back pocket, but I, I don't, you know. And at the end of the day, I just want our guys to be prepared and have the best tools to do that job. Right. So, you know, and I'm, I'm a very big advocate of tools, the right tools. You know, we are a home inspection company, but we do other things involving that. We are the people that call if somebody has stucco issues, we come out and inspect it in a more invasive style or moisture intrusion. You know, I got all my guys CRT certified, you know, I'm a level two thermographer, mm -hmm. you know, that's, and going into the electrical side, you know, we do a lot of commercial work for equipment and maintenance. So I got about $50,000 with cameras <laughs> in for red right. everywhere, and it's nothing wrong with it, but you know, the guy's got the $500 thermal camera, you know, for the home inspections, everybody's budget's different, but I, I learned very quick from my dad, you better have the right tools for the job. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, you know, sometimes you got to buy cheap to get started, but you need the tools to graduate, to graduate. Yeah. What's some of the, since we're on that sort of the technology that you've seen, you know, since you started to now, and then I imagine you probably get some sort of industry journals that kind of, you know, here, here's the next big thing going or, or what are the home inspectors where they're at now from a technology saying that, oh, you know, we really need something to do this. 
you know, what, what is down the pipe? So, so again, what, what, what have you seen evolve from a technology standpoint and then what might be in the future? Well, I think what we all need to remember to the, all these tools are great. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they can make us do our job easier make us look like hero, heroes and make us look like failures too, because being called in on some stuff, somebody saying it's moisture and it's like, that's not moisture. I can tell you what it is right now. Just looking at the image, you know, but I think everybody needs to remember that a home inspection truly is a visual inspection only. Mm -hmm. And testing of equipment is a simple push test of a button. If it comes on, it comes on and it operates a snapshot in time. Now, with that said, with the moisture meters, the thermal cameras, all that's not required in a home inspection. But nowadays it's needed because people read about it and hear about the nightmare stories. The sewer line's backing up. That's why we started doing scoping with our new constructions. It's included. Yeah, you get it whether you want it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, have we found problems? Yes, we have. You know, has it saved? Some trucks run over that line, Some trucks, crushed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, did it on an old one where the real estate agent put their sign in through it. Oh, yeah. my goodness. So it's oh, like, what God. is it? And I looked, I was like, it's the post. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it happens. But uh -huh. I think probably the most things that advanced is the technology in order to record your report or your findings. The, the software companies have gotten out there that become so far and it's not really clunky. They're easy to read if you set them up right and things like that. And it makes it easier for the inspector to document his job. I'd probably say that's one of the key factors. I mean, there's always going to be certain tools out there. Some guys like certain screwdrivers, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, certain flashlights, right. uh, you know, right. um, little OCD on some of that stuff. Well, it's me. It's, yeah. it's, it, I think it, obviously you the consumer. Uh, your buyer is mm -hmm. hopefully feeling more confident that, you know, you use the technology and you yes. scan the house and it did or didn't find anything. Or when it does, you do see something and say, Hey, I noticed these colors here and the, here's Cause I see you guys put on like Instagram or whatever. Mm -hmm. They'll say, yeah, look at, look at this, you know, as a scanner goes across it and it's got whatever color is showing moisture, you, you know, they're confident that, Oh, okay. Yeah. And you do need to hire somebody because that tech not, not, well, it looks like there's a little spot there. You probably should have someone inspect it. Like, nah, it's not a big deal. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and and that's where the technology, especially the cameras. I yeah. mean, and, and you got to know how to use the cameras. You know, that's that's what I'll say to any of the new inspectors get out there. Just because you buy a thermal camera, you need to know the ins and outs of it and at least get the basic training up. How, well, I mean, talking about that, you, you know, how do you, you guys say you do chat and so forth, but you know, maybe you don't have a, a formal day or, a form, you know, like, hey, once a month or on the third week, we're going to meet on Monday morning or something. Like that. But how often I mean, are you, you know, guys having a little gathering, yeah. you know, ex exchange ideas or, hey, here's some things we've been seeing mm -hmm. and or, hey, we've missed this on a couple of reports in the last month. Stuff, stuff like that. How often? I, I think kinda... that communication is daily. Yeah. You know, but every couple of months we try to go out and just kind of unwind mm -hmm. as a team. And just, you know, either, either top golf or going to lunch, you know, hanging out just for the day. We'll talk a little bit about work, but just kind of just chilling out a little bit. I'm going to finish up with a couple of questions. We're about an hour and 12 minutes right now. Marketing. Like you said, you got your license. And you're like, okay, what do I do next? Yep. Which is a common thing for many of the real estate agents that I've had go. Mm -hmm. They got their license. And, okay. I guess I'm supposed to sign up with a broker, but what am I, you know, what am I doing tomorrow morning? Yeah. From a marketing standpoint. In, in the years, what are you finding, you know, not only to retain the real estate agents that have called you, but also trying to, you know, obviously you're trying to always want to, you know, take on some new ones because some were fading off the back yeah. end, right? So what are you, what are you doing to retain? And then what are you doing to hopefully catch the attention of some new ones? Like when I first started, I mean, it, when I was a builder, you know, with my dad and stuff like that. It, it was all, always word of mouth. Mm -hmm. There's no marketing repeats word of mouth. You know, nowadays with social media, yes, I've hired a social media team, stuff like that to do that for me because I, I don't know that. I'll send them, hey, I think this would be good content. Here you go, you know, and, and they'll do whatever they do with it. Yeah, we'll send out a few emails here and there, you know, to the realtors kind of keep in touch. But I, honestly, I think the best marketing we could have is the customer service with the ones that we do have, mm -hmm. showing them we're still there, we're present, we're relevant. You know, even if you don't, if your client doesn't hire us for the inspection, if you got a question about something, please call me. 
Is that that's what we're here for. Right. You're still part of our team. I still want to be part of your team in some way. And then, and I think that resonates between the realtors, you know, like, Hey man, these, these guys are pretty solid. They're not, you know, Oh my God, the sky's falling and you know, bulldoze it down. And when there's been a couple like that, you know, when, when I know the realtor really well, like, Hey man, this is not the house for your daughter. You know, don't, you know, don't go further. I, I had Patty Ketchum on. She's one of the most well-known real estate instructors in the state of Florida. She's on the on the Florida Real Estate Commission appointed by the governor. I consider her Miss Real Estate in all of Florida. And she does some speaking nationally with the National Association of Realtors. She was a mortgage loan officer one time. And she talks about, and when I was interviewing her, about you know, basically the loyalty of the, mm-hmm. our real estate agent friends. And I can, when I completely understand this, you're, you, you work very hard as a real estate agent to, you know, one, acquire a, a buyer, mm-hmm. right? And then you're showing them a house, then you get the contract and now the, now the game really begins, right? You now yeah. got to, you now have the ball and you got to get it to the goal line. And when a loan officer fails you, or you at least appears to fail you, or a home inspector, for whatever reason, and sometimes it's even out of your control, my control, that it's our fault. Sometimes they sometimes will. It's just the house. They, yeah. So they're they're open for that next suggestion. So when when a, when you have you continue to have success stories, and that word of mouth goes, you know, some some real estate agent right now today, I guarantee, is having lunch with another real estate agent. And they're talking trash yep. about a loan officer, about a home inspector. 100%. And that other agent's going, why are you so-and-so? Why are you, are you so-and-so? Yep. At least today they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I've yeah. had those conversations about us. I mean, yeah. to be honest, I mean, we're not for everybody. And and that's okay. You know, I mean, we're not, you know, I mean, I've had a lot of people say, well, no other inspector's noting this but you. Doesn't make them wrong. Doesn't make me wrong. Mm-hmm. You do have 4.9 over 1,100 views. That's pretty good. It's decent, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, yeah. um, it can only be five, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, so it's, it's decent yeah. and, yeah. you know, and it's just, just because somebody else is not doing it doesn't mean it's that, that we're not correct. Right. You know, right. I'm, I'm hundred percent and, and I'll eat crow. I'll be the very first person to do it if I'm wrong and I'll admit it. From a yeah. philosophical side, if I could say this, you know, we watch a lot of, at least, you know, I do obviously cause I do spend a lot of time with the, with the show, social media. And I'm watching what others peoples do, it, and we we hear from the greats uh, or you know people that have reached a success in life and they're like, you know, keep doing what you're doing, keep consistently, you you you're gonna break through, keep doing. But they're breaking, they reached their level of success because they were putting stuff like that on their report, mm-hmm. and they stuck with it and they were consistent. Mm-hmm. And because just because today you're the only one doing it doesn't mean five months from now everyone will be doing it or five right. years and now everyone will be doing it. your conscious is telling you to put it on the report. And that's what, that's what I find is, is, you know, when you, it's when you stop putting it on the report, you're like, well, my conscious is telling me to put it on the report. Cause you feel you need to tell people mm-hmm. about whatever it is you're talking about know, type of thing. And, and that the agents need to understand that that, cause that's what we're, we're here to be great. The great ones weren't doing what everybody else was doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not saying I'm great. Yeah, but as I said, are, was it ninety eight percent, you know, or ninety nine percent of the people are all just you know going through like sheep, and there's this, the one percent that are excuses because they're putting stuff like that on the report for reason because yeah. their conscience is telling them to do it. The others are denying the conscience. Let, let's finish. I want to finish up with this, and then we want to talk about Canines for United. Mm-hmm. Just if you want to, in a real, you know, just a sales pitch, take thirty seconds, a minute or seven. What are the advantages of using inside and out? The advantages. I would say probably, you know, one most foremost were team inspections. So you're getting, I always say you get two for the price of one, you know, right? So you got two inspectors on the job. We're very efficient in what we do. Generally, we can have a report same day within a matter of hours if needed, things like that. And we need our access. We have that. We were probably the first one in St. John's County to get that back in 2014. Thanks to a certain realtor. I appreciate that. You know, and it's just, that's just what we do. We just... There's going to be a problem, but there's always a solution. And that's how we handle everything. And that's how we talk. So, PJ, talk a little bit because we didn't dig into detail because we did talk about communication and I knew you were going with it. How important is it when you're, you're working with you and training your guys up, how they present that report, especially to the buyer? It, it's very important. And that's, that's one of our, the, the thing that I keep saying over and over, it's, listen, there's always a fix. It can always be fixed. 
it's not our job to determine who fixes it or who pays for it. But if you find a problem, there's going to be a problem and, but it can be fixed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now that tolerance level is whatever that person or that buyer can handle. So we just want to make sure I tell my guys, it's like, Hey, you know, talk to them. Like, you know, you're talking to your sister. You're like, Hey, yeah, we got some issues, but they could be fixed. And you know, here's the right people that you need to go about finding the correction for that. Mm-hmm. You know, and not like, man, that thing's about to fall down. It, I'm, I, you know, I wouldn't. Well, how many inspectors there. out there, especially when you first started? You know, because I think I think you know your company and some other companies we've mentioned here today subtly, you know, raises raised the bar of of quality mm-hmm. of the report. But I, I would imagine when you first started, there was probably a majority of the companies out there, if not still fifty percent or more, that did the report and they just send it over and and done with it. Yeah, yeah. there's there's probably some. I mean, there's seventeen thousand plus home inspectors in the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. So, right. So it, when you send the report, like you said, we mentioned talking about this, calling the realtor first, get them on the page. You know, <laughs> hey, these are the things I'm going to tell it. But, you know, your guys are calling the buyer and, and hopefully, you know, page by page or, or what, you know, highlighting the important things they need to need to know. You know, when, when is that? Is that you, you're making that call, you know, as soon as it, that report's ready? How, how, how is that? How does that flow? Are you, are you preparing them to be ready for that call? The buyer yeah. say, hey, we're going to be calling you this evening or we're going to be calling you in a few hours when we have the report. It's generally by the end of the day. So yeah. between five and six, we'll make our phone calls unless we know like an agent says, hey, man, we're pushed to deadline. Can you push this one out? Yeah. Then it's within right after the report. We kind of just, if they were there, we'd give them a verbal rundown. We give them the verbal rundown over the phone, you know, and sometimes too, it's like, hey, you know, buyer's agent, can we get you on the phone? Let's get on three ways so we can only say it once Yeah, type of deal. Yeah, that's ideal. You know, and the yeah. communication is not. He said, she said, yeah. or I thought he said this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So th- that's kind of how it happens. You know, mm-hmm. by the end of the day, they'll hear from us and give verbal, a verbal rundown and then they'll get the reports probably within 30 minutes after that. Mm-hmm. All right. We want to jump over. You, you mentioned briefly, I did not know this. So fill in the, fill in the gaps. Your, your, how canine United came about. Canine United. Canine yes. United. So, yeah. yeah. So. It's an organization that uh, my wife started. It started back in 2000, I'm going to say 15, 14. So when we first moved up here to St. John's County, we were actually living over in Mirabella. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nam Barron got killed by a suspect. Chills already. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she just, we're always been dog people, land, animal lovers and stuff like that. So she wanted to go to the uh, funeral. And that's kind of how it started. She went to the funeral. I mean, everybody went there. And then, you know, she went to the donation. And then she realized the donation would go to a general fund, it wouldn't go to the canine unit itself. And then she wanted to do some other stuff. She formed the 501c3. She went through the law enforcement academy for the for the civilians, did a ride along with the canine unit, you know, on the, on that aspect. And just started learning more about it and saying, you know, hey, these are the most expensive units, but the most underfunded. And it's any issues with the department, it's just the funds are allotted other places. So that's the kind of how it started. So now underfunded from a standpoint of not not enough canine equipment, units equipment. for the workload. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So units, handlers, you know, we can't change the bodies, you know, how many personnel they got, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, you go to a couple you know, like JSO to St. John's, you know, they they got a pretty good fund, but they're still in need. Tracking artists, leashes, you know, things like that. We just outfitted, you know, we got St. John's County with the bulletproof vest. A certain type, you know, especially here for Florida, you don't want an overheat. We just did, we've been working on JSO. You know, there's 17, 18 dogs. Those vests cost 3500 bucks a pop, you know, and, and, you know, we, we get them fitted, we send it off and done that. I'm not sure if you heard about canine Huck up JSO. He got shot. Luckily he had the vest on, but he's luckily alive, but he's he still could break their ribs or whatever because yeah. impact, so, mm-hmm. you know, so key aspects of that's been you know, been done like that. So we'll put on a lot of training seminars, advanced training seminars. We bring in a lot of the best trainers across the nation and it's like a, a five day, four day problem solving situation. And it costs nothing to the handlers. We put them up. We'll get about 60 handlers out there, working spots, a few other little few. And it's, it's all on us. We just want to better these units. If they need, if they need something, we want to be there. For all them. right. So let me summarize this for you. What is so your working Primarily with with St. John's and Duval for nationwide. No nationwide. nationwide. Yes. Okay. So there, are, your wife is 
the founder. The founder. And then she is obviously, you know, obviously she's not in every, can be in every state and every county, yeah. and, you know, and try to stay up with what they need. But she's got, you know, people who've connected through a network under here yeah. who are doing what they can locally to help. You're not training the dogs, but you're helping them provide, you know, whether it's protection with a vest or just, you know, a better, higher level of living and operating. Yeah. You know, I mean, with, I mean it, with it, a little if, more. If they're having issues tracking, mm -hmm. you know, we have a tracking specialist there and they'll go in and they'll teach them tracking. You know, hey, some of these small towns may not. I mean, like with the Indiana and we had 60, 60 people there and probably five neighboring states that come there. Those guys can't get there. You know, my mm -hmm. wife's actually out there today in Sacramento doing a seminar out there, four day seminar out there you know, for the guys. And we just, that, that's the kind of stuff. That so she, did she have any, before she came up with this idea, was her, did she have any, you know, bat, you know, formal training in it? She's dug into this yeah. herself. You know, no, no law enforcement, no mass backgrounds or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just, just the passion for dogs and saw right. that there was a need. I mean, we've donated a whole vehicle to a unit in Alabama, you know, outfitted That's because awesome. his car was breaking down. You know, they, you know, so, I mean, it's the, the contacts that she's met, you know, I got to meet the governor a few times, been awesome. She's got two state bills passed, you know, going from a third degree to oh, second degree wow. felon. That's for awesome. Killing mounted unit, rescue dog, any kind of animal as far as that goes. And then we just got another bill passed, transporting of a canine into a ambulance. Before that couldn't happen, we got that passed because one, I think it was the ATF dog got in a fire in the back of his unit. And so luckily the, the chief said, get him there. And then like I mentioned, a canine hawk, he was the first one transported in a helicopter to the vet. If, if that wouldn't happen, he wouldn't have made it. You know it. what I'd like to do, so, maybe when your wife gets back and, you know, whatever is, you know, you know I don't put it in my normal real estate mix, mm -hmm. but just have her come in. We can do a Facebook live and video and just talk. Cause I think I can actually, I, I could bring in a couple other people and just have a discussion of the, cause I don't think obviously the common people don't understand that, you know, Hey, we're in St. John's County or Duval. We don't, we figure they have all this stuff, yeah. right? What are the, you know, she can go in and describe all these different little things that they don't have or mm -hmm. need. And, you know, because of bureaucracy and government, you know, that, that's the way it goes. That, that would, that would be, uh, awesome. I'm glad you went over cause I did not realize I've obviously heard of Canines United, but I didn't know, you know, I actually at first, I just assume you were like Canine for Warriors. You train the dogs, yeah. but actually you're, you're, you're bringing the, the extra gear, uh, gear the and things thing. that to some of these law enforcement officers are because some of these small towns, they really do need a canine unit, but don't. Or like I said, it's underfunded. The dog's not properly trained for what they're trying to use it for. Well, they don't have that special services. Yeah. 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 Heat alarms is one of the bigger things that she does is the, in the back of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. It alerts the, the dispatch, the, the handler, all that it's stuff. getting too hot in the car. Yeah. Get the dog out so, of the car. And not everybody has that. Yeah. Even in Florida. Right. So. Right. Interesting. Yeah. All right. I'm going to finish up. Here's our la my last informal question. Is it more important who you know? Or what you know and why? Well, there's a fine balance. <laughs> I, I got to say, there's a fine balance of that. So. Give, give me, I mean, being the entrepreneur, you've pretty much been your whole life. Yeah. How has that played? And, and some of you, you said, she, and it sounds like your wife has gotten to know some who's. She, she's got to know some who's. And, yeah. And even, and I, I'd say it even in business, it, you still got to know what to do with who you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's good to have those contacts, but if you don't know how to take advantage of them, but use them. Well, advantage, for, for, leverage them. Yeah. 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 In a positive for, way. For, yeah. To, to use them in the right way for you or for a purpose. Right. So you, you gotta have a little knowledge with the, who, you know, you know, mm -hmm. so that's why I say it's a fine balance. I'll, I'll give you that cop out answer. <laughs> <laughs> Typical home inspector. Oh, all right. I'm going to finish up. I appreciate it. Anyone still listening or we're going to cut some good reels from this. And it was exciting to hear about canines United. So if you see the different events, I'm sure your wife has locally and fundraising and that April sort of thing. April 29th, we got a 5k race down at World Golf Village. April 9th. So actually 29th. let's 29th. Okay. Yep. So what, let's have her 
you know, come on here in the next couple of weeks and we can talk about that so we can get word out about yeah. the race so someone might might not know you get about to see it. the dogs up we, close and personal. Yeah. Too. And so we know a lot of we have a lot of real estate agents that like to run. So yes, and probably something there to do for those who don't want to run either. You can hand out water or whatever. We can get them in a the bite suit. There we go. Yeah. Something <laughs> exciting about that. Yeah. You volunteered, right? Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. BJ, I appreciate you coming on. Yes, sir. His show will go out actually on Thursday on the Apple Podcast. I should have most of the video you start seeing his reels coming out here over the next few weeks as I'll drip them out on the, on the different things. But I appreciate you coming on. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you.